Hey guys, Ash Lane here coming at you today with a Patreon War recap with Daddy Warbucks Clan. So all the any fans out there, I'm sure there's tons of you. Okay, maybe not, but I'm sure you'll appreciate the uh, the clan here. Great clan, great group of players, international clan. Uh, just another really friendly bunch, and they all know what they're doing in war again. So I'm two for two on Patreon Wars, where the clan actually knows what they're doing, and uh, there's really not a lot of you know clear pointers that I can give them because they all you know have a f very firm grasp on the game so I was actually with them uh, for two wars and the I'm gonna recap the first war the second war unfortunately was against uh, a clan that did a lot of scouting and uh, we lost that one but we continued the streak with the first war so let's go ahead and get right into it what I want to do in this recap is just focus on their town hall nine attacks because we were matched up with a clan where a clan that wars 20 verse 20 25 verse 25 like daddy warbucks does Oftentimes they run into matches like this for whatever reason the opponents are showing cloud bases trophy bases and not anti three bases And that makes them a really vulnerable targets for people who know what they're doing now You'll see one theme throughout all of these attacks I think it's gonna help a lot of you guys out and you'll see that everybody in the daddy warbucks clan Lures out the clan castle and kills it no matter where it is no matter how many troops it takes They all lure and kill beforehand even if there's a lava hound they at least lure it to the side the perimeter of the map where they're going to engage the base and take care of it with a with their archer queen so really bunch of smart players here you know for the most part that a clan knows what they're doing if universally every single one of their players is luring and they're all using three star attacks like goho even against these relatively easier trophy bases now why are the trophy bases easier well a the clan castle is easier to lure so you want to make sure they have to you make them pay for that and B that their archer queens usually aren't incredibly uh, protect well protected in terms of defenses now I am going to show you the MVP bases of this uh, war recap as well on our side so stay tuned for that towards the end of the episode uh, a couple votes for the most valuable base now you can see there's going to be a common thread to all of these town hall 9 attacks these go Goho attacks, strong Goho attackers here in the Daddy Warbucks clan. So if you're looking for a clan, you're looking to learn some of these three-star attacks, I'll tell you what, a lot of these attacks are going to look similar in terms of army composition. They're really comfortable with these Goho attacks. If your clan is transitioning into three-star attackers, it's getting away from Go Wipe, Go Wee Wee still, uh, these are the type of attacks you want to mimic. What you're doing is bringing in that heavy skill, uh, kill squad, the two golems, shattered variation, you're bringing in plenty of wizards making sure you establish that funnel take a couple giants to distract from the point damage or to help with the lure make sure you lure the clan castle use your poisons on the clan castle and then go ahead and trickle in the hogs now you'll notice that these guys don't use too many surgical attack methods with the hogs so what they're doing is taking advantage of these easier base designs that they're going against and basically just enveloping the entire defensive base from a whole 180 degree angle with the hogs so they'll make their way in a uniform motion throughout the whole entire base base in a sweeping formation so that's actually a really good tactic to use especially if the base is symmetrical like this you know you don't need to necessarily use your hogs in a and you can see I'm zooming in the Giants right now just to illustrate that they're taking the distract they're distracting the point defenses and then the hogs are coming in in two sweeping motions just like I just talked about and these hogs are you just watch them you have three heal spells you're gonna watch your hogs at first they're gonna stay kind of spread out and then they're gonna slowly merge together as they make their way through the base you can trade you can you can figure out the uh, the hog direction the hog pathing rather uh, by looking at any base before you attack it oftentimes the Teslas especially in these trophy bases will be bunched together like you can see right below the town hall there your hogs will usually merge at that point you might have a few stray hogs here or there that's all right just use your heal spells wisely they're gonna make their way through the base nine times out of a ten if you deploy correctly your queen is going to stay alive you use the queen the remaining hogs obviously the Giants will help a little bit in the wizards and archers for cleanup at the end of the raid really nice three-star attack 
here by Shake and Bake. Actually, both of them have been by Shake and Bake. So, cheers to you, my my fine fellow. Uh, got to meet Shake and Bake and a few other of the uh, the co-leaders and and just regular members throughout the last uh, four days. So it's been a good stay. Uh, Baldwin Clan, another good attacker here, and you'll see the heroes a little bit lower in level now for Baldwin versus Shake and Bake. So we're gonna see how to do the same type of strategy. You can see he doesn't have the uh, the giants with him here, but he does have the four heal spells. So he's going to use wall breakers to engage that first layer of base. But look what he just did there. Oh my god, that's so key. Another telltale sign of a bad base design is when you have the double giant bombs around the perimeter of the base like that. Baldwin clan was not afraid to go ahead and use 5 to 10 hogs, as many as it took there, to make sure he went ahead and detonated those of uh, giant bombs before heading in with the kill squad. Now, when you're able to detonate two sets of giant bombs right off the bat and lure the clan castle, even though, like I said, it's a lava hound, not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to lure it, but obviously when your archer queen and wizards are attacking the lava hound towards the perimeter of the base where they're not under such heavy defensive concentration, it's going to be a, it's going to help your raid out, it's going to make you more successful. So these are just smart little things, and I got to say, this is the thing about Daddy Warbucks, right? They uh, they watch a lot of YouTube videos, they watch a lot of channels, obviously, they know what they're doing, and they do the little things, and that's how you can turn your clan from an average clan to an above average clan. You do the little things, you detonate the obvious giant bombs. Even if you don't know for sure, I'm sure this is a cleanup attack, but if you don't know for sure that the giant bombs are around the perimeter, look at this base, there's not many other spots for them to be. And look at how many hogs he has left standing at the end. That is certainly a good barometer for what was a good or bad three-star attack here. And look at it, just tons of troops left. His queen was left, and only with 10 and 15 heroes. So certainly a really good attack. We're just going to keep going down the line here. A lot of nice three-star attacks by Town Hall 9s. And look at this. We're going to get away from the Goho. Town Hall 11, a really rushed Town Hall 11. And we're going to do a little experiment and see where this base falls on their map after this raid. We're going to take a look at the guy above him and the guy below him. Hopefully this will prove that .5 is still very much a thing. I don't know, anybody who says that .5 is dead just clearly has no idea what's going on in the game. I mean, I don't want to be offensive with that or, or rude. But at the same time, it's clearly a thing, of course. it's it's uh, You might not like it. You might not want to use it. That's totally fine. That's totally up for debate. But to say that it's not effective is downright wrong. So you can see that... Uh Tiny4E is going to go ahead and use his queen because he's using a Penta, a Penta La Lune here. And when you use a Penta La Lune strategy, your queen, you can actually use it in a lot of versatile ways, right? You can use the, or you can use her in the beginning of the attack to help with the clan castle kill. You can use her towards the end to help with the cleanup. Or you can try this attack if your queen is upgrading because she is not as important as a traditional Go La Lune attack or a Go Ho attack. You don't need her in the kill squad because there is no kill squad. You're basically going to lure the clan castle, take Take that out or distract it and then go ahead and bring the hounds in, bring the balloons in behind the hounds for cover and you guys know basically what the Penta La Lune strategy is. It's a very uh, very good strategy especially if the air defenses are a little bit rushed or they're a little bit under leveled for the base. You can make them pay by using the Penta La Lune. Now if the air defenses are max for the level it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You might only get two stars, you might only get one star but this is a great way if you see those low level air defenses or you have your queen upgrading, this is probably one of the best strategies to use. So let's go ahead and uh, show one more base. Oh, well, no, let's compare the bases. This is the base below. This is the Town Hall 11 or 9.75. And this is the Town Hall above. Now I ask you, offensively speaking, not in terms of rush base, what base would you rather have? Because this base ranks ahead of the Town Hall 11. Go one down and boom, you have a level 5 Grand Warden. That Eternal Tome ability is, is, is absolutely unbelievable in war. To have that and rank below that relatively low uh, Town Hall 9 is huge. It's a huge advantage on their side. And uh, yeah, it, it just is. So this is uh, the, uh, the tables attack on this base. So again, really low level heroes here uh, versus uh, what you saw previously in the recap. And we're going to go ahead here, like clockwork. I, I mean, I've said it three times now. I'm going to stop saying it, but just note here. These guys lure everything. <laughs> they know what they're doing. 
They're not going to let the clan castle. They're not going to not have a plan for the clan castle. So Table has a nice attack here. Again, just going ahead and take, making them pay for having the uh, the, the really low level air defenses there. Uh, Town Hall 8 uh, level air defenses. This guy must have just upgraded. And you can see he's just going to be very patient. Use his, I think he had three rage spells and uh, three haste spells here. I believe. Might have to rewind and double check that. But you can see there's just going to be a huge sweeping motion in the base. He doesn't waste any bullets. Balloons. There's no balloons that don't have a, uh, a decent uh, meat shield in terms of the hounds. So these balloons are just going to envelop the base starting at 6 o'clock, moving to 12 o'clock. And this, that's it. I mean, he makes it look really easy. The puppies will take out the queen, especially if the queen is below level 15 in the enemy side. The puppies are actually absolutely going to tear right through her. So don't worry about the enemy archer queen. It's not like a traditional Gola loon where you really have to make sure you take out that queen in the first phase of the attack with your kill squad. Here here, you just send a few Lava Hounds into the direction of the enemy queen and the pups will take her down. Uh, let's go ahead and show some of the defensive highlights. They weren't able to two-star my base, so that is a good sign. This base is uh, is easy if you're experienced with it and it's a little bit tricky if you're not ready for it. Look at how many units, how many structures are in the, the bottom hemisphere of the base. In the top half of the base, it's kind of deceiving. There's a lot of walls, but there's not a lot of structures. Even if you go ahead and snipe against this base, as you going to see Eagle Strike does here, you think that, hey, if you can snipe 10-15% off this base in the beginning of the attack, you can easily come in through the, from the north, take out the town hall, and take out 50%. But that is abs absolutely not correct. That's It's a little bit of an optical illusion because you might easily you might think that. But what's going to happen here is even with that 10-15% sniping and uh, to start off the raid, you can see that the kill squad does make it to the town hall but barely gets over 40% on the base. So there's not a lot of units up top so it's hard to get that 50% unless you have the uh, the intestinal fortitude to come in from the bottom of the base then you can much easier get a two star against this base but some people think that that might be a little, be a little bit too tough because you're going through so many units but it's actually the best way to attack that base now a quick MVP shout out to table again he had the most defenses it took them five tries to three star and they didn't three star so they, they had five attempts at three starring tables base so I asked uh, permission they said go ahead and show the base this is the base that table uses uh, very well he has a very well defined perch over here for the archer queen you can see below her uh, there is if I can select it there's the storages the gold storage the elixir storage the dark elixir storage a lot of high hit point units that are protecting that queen all from around her most vulnerable area which is to the south and to the west of the queen so that provides a nice protection from the queen no double giant bombs over here because this would be the obvious spot to hit the queen uh, from an unskilled attacker's point of view most direct route, but you won't detonate any double giant bombs They're up here in the northeast and, uh, and the Tesla is protecting the giant bombs. It's a good base. It's a solid base design, especially considering it's not, you know, maxed out Town Hall 9. It's just a really solid base design. They weren't able to three-star it. They had five cracks at it, and they even had a Town Hall 10 uh, take a crack at it, or two Town Hall 10s take a crack at it, and they weren't able to get that three-star down. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, end things there. Shout out again to Daddy Warbucks. Thank you guys for all the support. It was a pleasure getting to know you all, and thank you all so much for watching. And uh, go ahead and join uh, da Daddy Warbucks if you guys want to. They're almost at level 9. Help them get there. And uh, thanks to all of you guys for watching. Thank you so much to my uh, other Patreon supporters. And as always, guys, take care. Oh guys, don't forget to subscribe to 3 Star Vault, it is a huge aggregation of 3 star attacks sorted out by Town Hall level and air versus ground strategy. Check it out, uh, submit your raids, uh, let me know on Twitter if you have any good ones, and uh, hey, as always, take care guys.